ACLA. And we are back. And uh, we are here at La Brea Tar Pits at the Lake Pit. This is one of my favorite places in all of LA. And by the way, Purple Line Extension is going right past us here. Uh, it's going to be, it's opening up in uh, L uh, La Brea on Wilshire uh, in the next year. And then uh, the next stop is Fairfax, and it's going to go all the way to Westwood. Uh, so the uh, the subway and the metro line extensions are happening all over the city uh, as we're speaking, as we're sitting here. I want to thank our guests today, Joseph Bray Ali, Katya Duft, Adrian Hoff with her fancy cane. <laughs> um, I guess the first thing I'd want to talk about is uh, uh, how the knee is handling. I, I also had a knee injury about two years ago, and I had to spend some time in the front of the bus with the cast on and or the wrap and the crutches and I don't know if you guys have dealt with that before um, it's hard yeah mm -hmm. I, fortunately I've had um, a pretty good experience as far as getting seats on the bus go mm -hmm. um, I've been really lucky to be getting on buses coming home from work that are half empty really so it hasn't really been too much of an issue but then usually somebody will block me in the seat and then yeah. when we get to my stop they're, they do that thing where they just kind of slide their legs over, but I can't slide past them right now. I need yeah. full space. To, so like, okay, well, thank you, but can you stand up, please? They, they so don't, they don't see the cane. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes they do, but they're just not connecting the dots. Yeah. But you can always take the cane just like, boom, on their toes. Yeah, exactly. That'll <laughs> get the point across. <laughs> <laughs> It could be very painful. I once had a toe surgery, big toe, and after that I got on the on the bus and I didn't have a cane or anything. But there was an old man with a cane yeah. who put his cane right on my toe that oh. I had just a surgery on. And I started crying and he didn't couldn't see very well, but he could hear me screaming. Yeah. And he said, What's wrong, honey? Why are you crying? PMSing today? That's so classic. I did a surgery and then I went like my tears went like this like clown tears. Wow. Right in his face. <laughs> you know, the hard said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm the, sorry, honey. The <laughs> hardest thing for me is that I'm so tall that like my knee was injured and I would have to keep the leg out straight. So oh, yeah. as a result, uh, I would take up the, I would cross the aisle. And uh, so I would have to literally stand in the seats. And then, um, you know, I couldn't sit down in the front section. And then people would grab my crutch like it was another railing. You know? <laughs> you know, it, was, it was very difficult to you get around. It's a range for when they're going to get off the bus. Like, so I'm, gonna, I'm getting off in two stops. Just, you know, oh, <laughs> I, railing's going away, kid. I would, I would, yeah, right. I'd, I'd find these, uh, you start using railings and walls as like protective barriers. It's really yeah. weird. You start developing this ingenuity once people like hit your leg two or three times. Uh, but it was always really rough. Um, you know, I've, I've dealt with this on bikes before too, with sprained ankles. Like you must have had times before where you, oh, yeah. you get wrecked and then you gotta still <laughs> find your way back. You know, it's funny. I since I started riding every day to go to work, I haven't had many crashes. The, the times I've gotten injured were doing really dumb things in my 20s, like racing in these underground races or thinking I could go across tracks and parallel with them and yeah. things like that. What I found is like the long term injuries that I get from riding really all the time and not taking a break and not really doing anything else. Um, I've gotten my back it's developed some weird pain in it and my knees. I had the seat too high or the seat too low. Um, one of the worst things uh, that's occurred were those huge forest fires every once in a while where oh. the air, I mean, you can't even walk without getting breathless. And if you rely on your bike to get around, it's like, you just, you're just stuck. So like that's things that people don't really think about when it comes to injury, before. but yeah, it makes a huge impact on your life. There's like really bad air quality that day because of a fort, like a massive forest fire. Yeah. You're really out of luck. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I've had my own interesting experiences on the bus as well. When I was growing up on the west side, I took the number two and I used to try to bring my surfboard on. Oh, okay. And that's like being crippled because, oh my Have God. Have you done that, yeah. Adrian? I, I'm not taking my surfboard on the bus. Okay. I might do it's it tricky. on the expo line. I think that might be a little easier. I you know, they say do it, will. but my God, it's, it's fraught. It's a fraught, yeah. it's a minefield of issues. I'll ride a like, longboard too. The, so that's <laughs> the, the, metro, the metro has all Nine sorts foot of... Nine three, like just clearing aisles and yeah, stuff. Just yeah, just taking out everybody the, with like my eight foot board. <laughs> the met metro suggestions, like they have billboard right yeah. by my house. I'm in uh, 
uh, La Brea Tar Pit area, and that's also uh, the fabric section of town. There's a lot oh, of fabric man. stores down at the bottom of La Brea by Wilshire. So they have a big billboard there and says, do your shopping on the Metro. And it shows this little woman who's carrying like these, probably like a hundred like square feet of like right. large like <laughs> fabrics. And I'm thinking like, if you put that on the bus, everybody would hate you. <laughs> They'd have to do the handicap ramp to get the, <laughs> right. to get the stuff on. It would block the whole, it would be a fire emergency. It's like, I, I think that uh, the Metro gives some bad suggestions. So, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sure the intent is good. Right. It's like one of those, like, on paper, yeah, it's a great idea. You know, uh, bring your life-size replica statue of the Mastodon on the bus <laughs> home with you. <laughs> Go to the Labrea Tar Pits today, yeah. But, no, I had this one bus driver. Oh, he used to, it was this one older guy. He was bald, beard. I can still see him with behind these big, like, um, you know, like that Cool Hand Luke glasses? Yeah. Uh, you ever see that movie where he'd eat all the eggs and the horrible, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, son, you ain't getting on today. Not with them skags on your thing. I'm like, what's a skag in the first place? Was, that was the fins on my board, and oh, man, it was rough. It was rough. Wow. And that was like, you know, going from Mar Vista into Santa Monica or Venice to go surf, so. It's Probably. fraught. It's a, it's a minefield. I want to see, I want to like get that live video feed of the uh, surfboard issues on like day three or whatever. And what would that be like on the way back too, after it's all wet and sandy oh, and stuff? Oh. <laughs> yeah, the wet seat thing's going to be fun. Yeah, you know? no kidding. <laughs> yeah, just think about how my car was when I still had one and I was surfing like three times a week. Yeah. It was just like everything was damp all the time and gross. <laughs> you know, what? I'd, I'd almost feel more comfortable with seats covered with salt and sand right. uh, than covered in the stuff that's at the other end of the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least the sand I'm isn't cool. abrasive, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what sand is. Yeah, You exactly. don't know what mystery fluids are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, I saw something on the train the other day that reminded me of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. mystery oh, fluids, what's, what's going on? on? <laughs> Adrian, Adrian is a, uh, she's big on uh, reptiles. She has pet turtle. Oh, and I'm you. riding on the gold line. And uh, this kid is holding a, uh, this little lizard, like maybe three inches long. Aww. And the lizard's in his fist, and he's kind of petting its head. And the lizard's just kind of all chill. And this woman, awesome. she's like in charge of like four or five like uh, uh, mentally handicapped adults, you know, doing a transport. And she starts yelling at this kid who's not in her group because she's angry that he's taken a lizard. And she's afraid he's going to kill the lizard because she's an animal person, which I get. But she wouldn't let him go. And she's just like, you have to give me that lizard now so I can release it. Because if you take it home, it's going to die. And the guy's going, like, don't worry, man. I'm going to let it out in bushes when I get home. <laughs> and she's like, no, you can't do that. It's going to die. It's not used to those bushes. Just give me the lizard. And the kid goes, if you don't get out of my face, I'm going to make a fist and kill this lizard. Yeah. And, and the woman's power. going so, like, bat crazy. And I don't want to see this lizard get killed and I know the kid's not going to do it but he storms out like to the back of the train and we get to Union Station and I then the woman's behind me and I'm thinking about this kid and the lizard but I know I'm never going to see him again but then I pass the on M's pretzels like in between the gold line and the red line oh, right. and he's there with the lizard in his Aww. fist and he's patting its head and he's <laughs> negotiating with the Aunt M like concessionaire to get a cup of water for his lizard. And you know what? I think him and that lizard have a pretty good relationship going. As long as he's not trying to put a baby bison in his SUV. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, I want to give you some time to talk about that first district um, because mm -hmm. as a bicycle advocate, and a street safety expert, one thing I noticed being on Figueroa, those cars go really, really fast. Well, Figueroa, North Figueroa is a lot like a lot of old streets in Los Angeles that used to have street cars. They were designed with these quite wide sometimes widths, you know, so you have two street cars passing either way. And in the 50s and 60s, we tore all that out and turned them into freeways between red lights. And it's a bizarre situation to do to a city like Los Angeles with all this low slung development. It really doesn't serve the interest of people that are living right on that boulevard or in the area around them. But um, more importantly, the first council district is, I believe it is, the poorest district in all of the city. There are 15 of them. Is it? And the economic by, by you know, per capita income, it is the poorest. It also has some of the most transit dependent people or the highest transit use in the, in the whole city. Um, in the Chinatown region, 
I think something like 30% or more than 30% of the, the residents use buses, trains, or bikes to get to work every day. Makes sense, though, just geographically, totally. it's a great area for that. Yeah, it, you know, if, if the urban planners in this county were to pause from reading glossy magazines and go visit LA's Chinatown in the first district or Pico Union or MacArthur Park, and some of them have, you, they would see very quickly that this is that dream world they always talk about. Let's get people out of cars and get yeah. them walking everywhere. Well, they do, but the city's not there to support them. And um, that's a big reason why uh, this, all this advocacy work I've done has really pushed me in the direction of like, hey, let's run for city council. There's some pretty low budget, uh, low budget tools that we can use to very quickly improve the quality of life yeah. of people that are walking and using transit today, like literally tomorrow. There's uh, pools, of, pools of money that are being squandered on bizarre things like shuttles for workers to go from job site to job site that uh, we could easily turn around and make into a big incentive for all the folks walking to school and walking to work and taking the bus and the train every day. And um, that's what I'm really interested in doing. Now, do you do the dim sum uh, ride still? Well, I've had I, to, I had to take a hiatus. Obviously, you can only do so much. Uh, running a bike shop is a <laughs> lot of work. There's not a lot of money in the bike business. I've been really good at building social capital, not actual capital. Yeah. Man's gonna eat though. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, right? So um, we did, the, we did, God, literally like you know a couple hundred of those dim sum rides. So I've got some recommendations if you're interested. Um, but I had to take a hiatus uh, earlier this year to prepare to ramp up. It's like a big sales job. You have to go around and introduce yourself to thousands of people, and uh, it's fun and it's yeah. exciting, but. Man, there's only so many hours in the day. I'm hitting my limit right now, and it's been. I'm really enjoying learning about yeah. you know the lives of so many interesting stories in this city. Um, I get a few couple hundred every month every month from my customers. Yeah. And now to like get to meet literally thousands of people, and it's it's been really like next phase of my life. It feels like it's been pretty exciting. So yeah, yeah. The dim sum rides will take a hiatus for now. I may do a few for my campaign, like that's you know, a good idea. Fun fundraiser or just kind of a fun thing to do yeah. in general. If people ever get sick riding home afterwards because they oh, eat too man. much. We, okay, this is the problem with the dim sum ride, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I don't know if you've had dim sum before, but it's not like, it's not light eating yeah. generally. It's like so all you can eat. It's like starchy or, or and... Not all you can eat, but eat as much as you, you can. Eat a lot, yeah. yeah. And so we get out there in the br at brunch and nobody, everyone starves themselves through breakfast, right? We go on this beautiful little morning bike ride and we eat dim sum. And then when you get out, you're like... Oh, man. <laughs> and it expands. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have too many of those uh, chashubao and like your stomach is like, oh, and it feels like nap time. Um, and then the, the kind of late midday sun is up. So we'd usually stop and get ice cream or boba on the way back. And that was a good way to chill out, you know, <laughs> let, that, let that carbohydrate coma come on strong and then <laughs> throw us one dim sum recommendation right now. Um, favorite if, dim sum restaurant. Oh, man, that's a tough one. My personal favorite in the San Gabriel Valley is King Wa on Main Street. I love that place. Yeah. I was wow. just there like solid. two weeks ago. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> we went there for my daughter's birthday one year. They've got a very good fresh menu. The prices are pretty good. Wow. And um, it's, the, it's the Taiwanese style where you order from a little list and they bring it fresh out of the kitchen as opposed to the one which is like, I think, kind of a more of a Southern Chinese style where they Maybe not Southern Chinese, but the, it's a different, a Hong Kong style where they have the carts and the ladies yelling at you, oh, which yeah. people that's love. That's Boston too. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Love that, but the dim sum is much fresher, the go to the kitchen and bring it away, and that's King Wah's got a really good, they're, they're knocking it out of the park every time you go there. Well, there so. we have it. Two out of four panelists say <laughs> King Wah, so King Wah is now the official dim sum yes. of Boston, oh, Los really? Angeles. There we go, we needed one of those. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we are uh, running out of time here, so I'm going to wind it up. I want to thank you guys once again. Uh, we have um, uh, Adrian Hoff and Katya Duff and Joseph Frey Ali. Hoff the Beaten Path is her blog. Tales from the Bus is her blog. Do you have a website set up for so, your campaign yet? Yeah, it's my name Joe, J-O-E, the number four, and then CD1, Joe for cd one .com. Okay, and also why don't you throw an address and a website out for the for your uh, Flying Pigeon also. Oh yeah, it's the Flying Pigeon LA bike shop. You just type in Flying Pigeon LA. We're like the first 50 links. Oh, I noticed uh, that. Yeah, actually. we get a lot of phone calls, people asking if we sell bird seed, but uh, <laughs> it's just bikes. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's a really nice shop too. I mean, I got oh, to spend thanks. a little time in there. You know, saw you guys yesterday. It's a little, uh, uh, coffee house uh, adjacent to it. Oh, and, it's like uh, one of the best neighbors to have, yeah. yeah I'm I ramped bet. up on espresso like all day, every day. <laughs> I get a discount, you know, you buy your fifth cup, you get the sixth one free or something like that. And very close to the train stations too. You're mm -hmm. right by Heritage Square and not far from uh, Cypress exactly. Park either.
Yeah, yeah. No, uh, being close to those, when the East Side Extension opened up, we did a, a fake map that was um, a coupon at our shop. Oh, that wow. That was like, yeah, that was a fun one. The Metro people found out about it and we had to stop. But uh, it was, <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, we were man. stuffing the map boxes with our fake maps. It Come wasn't on, it was have the a opposite sense of, of humor, infamy. Metro. <laughs> So anyway, I want to thank our guests one more time, Joseph Bray Ali, running for the first district council position, Katya Duff, Tales from the Bus, Adrian Hoff, Hoff the Beaten Path. My name's Scott Schultz. Our next live busted is this Sunday, the 22nd, at Stories LA Books Cafe in Echo Park. And uh, for those of you who are uh, taking the bus, riding your bike, Walk in the streets, skating, skateboards, be careful out there. And for all of you driving, please respect the crosswalks. Thank you and have a nice evening.